はい、はい、というわけでですね、はい、じゃあ8月18日東西線の I'm only gonna be here a little while. Probably like, probably like 40 minutes. This is gonna be a short one. Dude, look, it's Alex. He's tearing it up. Hell yeah. I love that overhead. Hold on, I gotta watch that run again because it was fast. Let's relish Alex. It's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen this Alex. Me command grab. Low short into another command grab. Stand strong at the EX chop, which is safe. Overhead. Stand fierce is an overhead. It's like really fast. It's only barely slower than Street Fighter V Stand Fierce. One of the better overheads in this game, to be honest. Good range, good damage. Decent speed. His command grab is, um... It's got okay range, but it, you have a hard time landing it outside ticks. It's not as good as Hugo's. I don't know what about it's worse, but it's just, it feels worse when you use it. Obviously the range is a little bit worse, but I think the speed is too. And there might be some third component, like inability to grab limbs or something like that. I don't know. Something about it doesn't feel like a true SPD. I'm pretty sure the entire issue is just the speed though. I think Alex could have punished that. That might be, oh, never mind. That least throwable during that uh, super. But it came up before Alex's throw could resolve. Look, look at these characters. They're in Street Fighter V. Ooh, remember that? Remember that move? Ah, empty jump throw. Classic. The Sabuki's name is Water. Someone already made that joke. Almost word for word. I got home from work and then I ate a hot dog. And now here I am. Ooh, that's a punish. That sweep is kind of unsafe. Sweeps in this game are a bit like sweeps in Street Fighter V. They're kind of hard to space to be safe, but they're usually not very unsafe. They're usually only punishable by, like, other sweeps. Towards hard kick is a pretty good button. So is towards medium kick. This is very Street Fighter V-ish, isn't it? I wonder if the Sabuki plays Street Fighter V. He's good. That's unparryable. Catches people trying to parry. Oh, no punish. I think Ibuki gets something there. Ibuki's range punish options are not so good because her, her normals are extremely stubby. Stay medium kick is one of the better ones in terms of a balance of speed and power. Most everything has either a bad hitbox or like poor speed and good range or poor uh, range and good speed. Ooh, very nice. Look at that stun bar go! Almost got dizzied. She's gonna die though. Alex's damage output is really high. Unfortunately, Alex has very, very few opportunities to combo. Which means that even though his damage output is kind of high, um, it basically only comes out to show in, like, post-dizzy. Which is actually quite a bit like uh, Street Fighter V Alex now that I think about it. Alex's damage output in Street Fighter V is abysmal. Unless you've got, like, some ridiculous impossible setup that's only possible post-dizzy, in which case it's quite good. Oh no. Um, EXDP is technically always punishable. I forget the specifics. Either you can't hit normals coming down, or the normals you hit coming down are just easily interrupted. I just know that every time I block a Buki CX uppercut, I can hit stand strong. I'm pretty sure that if you... I'm pretty sure there are no follow-ups available besides super cancelling if you EXDP in this game. Ooh. I think the follow-ups are on hit only. 
Wake up. Super one. That's like a two-frame super. Not a bad wake-up option, really. One of the subtle little things about uh, Super 1 Spinning Beat is that it actually um, works as an anti-air. Or not as an anti-air, but like if the opponent happens to get hit mid-air in your mashing, um, it will get a partial connect and you will be safe. Whereas Super 2 will get a partial connect and I think um, it'll do a lot less damage anyway. I don't remember if Super 2 is actually punishable if it anti-airs. But Super 1 is a far better anti-air. It also has a shorter meter and technically holds more bar. That being said, Super 1 is a lot worse of a Super than Super 2 in terms of, like, you know, combos. The damage is, like, half. Elena doesn't have that many opportunities for a Super anyway, so they end up being about the same. Of course, Elena's uh, Super 3 is also really good. So overall, she's got a very solid selection of supers. There are some Elena players who run Super 3 in every matchup. There are some who run all three of them, or at least two of them, depending on the matchup. There are some Elena players who run Super 2 every matchup. Ooh. Super 1 is probably the rarest, but when I say rarest, I mean 30%. As opposed to the other two, which are like 35 uh, these are relatively recent. These, this one in particular is from like August of t t 2016. Oh no! Yikes, Mallet Smash is kind of risky. All versions of Mallet Smash are kind of risky in this game. They're all safe and they're all overheads and they all do pretty good damage and stun. Um, there's actually no repeated... No, hold on. I think there's no actual repeated... I don't know. I think it depends on the character. I think against... No, I don't remember. I don't remember. I haven't done it in too long. I think it can be frame perfect depending on the character. But generally it's not. Or something. Wake up throw is a very solid option in this game. Wake up, uh, reversal, parry into throw. You never do, like, reversal throw, but, like, um, parry OS throw is a very strong wake up option. Dudley's jump is really, really fast. He doesn't jump very high, which gives him basically, like, he always has, like, a KOF style hop. Interesting juggle. That does juggle properly. He was a little early, so he lost one hit more than he should have. But you generally get nearly the whole super as an anti air. Very nice. Dudley doesn't actually navigate these fireballs all that well. The problem with Remy is that, I, like, he was designed around the idea that every character handles fireballs as poorly as, like, Yurian or Hugo does. His fireballs. The fact that his high fireballs are duckable by a lot of the cast. I'm pretty sure his Super 1 isn't even invincible. I'm, like, trying to think of a time I've ever gotten hit by a Rissle Super 1. To be honest, almost all Remy's pick Super 2 against me. Which is invincible. I feel like it is. I've forgotten. It's been too long. I'm like having all these fucking Street Fighter 3 memories flash back at me. I remember it's pretty fast. It's only one frame slower than this Super 2. It might be invincible. Oh, that stand short. Really bad meaty. Ooh, good placement. It's very important for Elena to push the offense pretty quickly. Stun is um, your easiest way of winning this match. And she's very close. Oh, that's a shame. The angle that she was coming in, after parrying the uh, Crouch Fierce, none of her attacks were going to hit, I'm pretty sure. Jump light kick and jump medium kick were just going to go straight overhead. He should have hit jump medium kick. Whoa, I just got a sub. 
ことはないんですけど、まあ、相当我慢強くなきゃ。おー、very nice。DP as soon as he landed。Yeah, that's why。That's why it's risky to do m a l i c e smashes in this game。Nice double。Oh my god, she was really still in block stun? What the fuck? Time out, I want to see that again. Why'd that not work? I don't think it was because she was out of range. That was really strange. Do you guys see that? Either Remy has the saddest fucking throw range in the universe, or that fireball was in block stun for a year. I can't tell! I think she was still in block stun. That was really strange. It's not like you can low profile a throw or anything. Whoa, that was a bait. I used to do that in Street Fighter 4 all the time. You do a deliberately you do a deliberately marginally unsafe healing and then punish the attempted punish. That was like that's not as weird as it looked. The heal. Heal is often used deliberately badly to try and bait. Because it's a lot it recovers a lot faster than people realize. What a terrible punish. Q gets the taunt off and he eats a single crouch jab. Well, Anna can really bully Q because he's tall. He,、um, she basically has two hit air normals on him. Like, all the time. Because Jump Around House hits twice quite easily. Whoa! And、uh, her jump towards Strong Fierce hits、uh, both hits quite easily on him. So basically, she has like. Her, her jump ins are all two hits and they all auto confirm. And also, they're you know, marginally harder parries. Or rather, parries that require reads. It's not like parrying two hits is hard. It's just that if you parry the first hit, trying to parry a second hit and then she just lands will fuck up your like, follow up. This is not Kuroda, if only. This is Takahashi. Being forced to make a read on like, a two hit parry. The Ta. Of Takahashi is the same as the Da of Kuroda. It's not the same, but it's similar. As a general rule in Japanese,、um, however many syllables is however many letters. It's not always true, but it's often true. There's one letter that doesn't obey that. It's,、mm, it's like an N. So, if you have a word like Zubon, it's written with three, it's two syllables but written with three characters. But most things are one syllable per character. Takahashi, one, two, three, four. Yeah, see that two hit air string? It's really problematic for Q. It's one of the. Ooh, the juggle! It's one of his big weaknesses in this matchup. There it is, that's the. I think Super would have been okay there. He was in a really bad spot though. That's seven parries, the hands. I parried it before, it's not terribly hard. You only need to parry one hit and then you can interrupt. But if you parry all the hits, you get better punishes. The parries are kind of slow for that. Actually, I think they're only slow for the normal version. I think the X one, they're normal speed. They're fast. Bafkun. Oh no! Oh no! Can I grab? No, just super. I don't even know if he gets a command grab there. That's so strong. Oh, that's. What an odd punish. If you're gonna use an EX move, why don't you just use EX Spin Scythe? Is there like some situation where EX Spin Scythe doesn't combo from Low Strong? Because I don't know it. Alright, that was nice. Parry into Low Strong into Super is like the. That's like the Street Fighter 3 super setup. It sounds all easy. Oh, he missed it. But actually, it's very unusual to go for.、Um, like, it's. it's I mean, it's, it's a skill you have to cultivate almost immediately in Street Fighter 3 for most characters. But it's weirder than it sounds to parry and then do a normal cancelled straight to a super. Or for some characters, parry into normal special super. Like, it sounds quite easy. Or it sounds very basic to do, like, parry into low forward into Ken Shippu. 
Oh, he fucked that set up. He went for the ghetto Kuroda. Okay, this should kill. He needs a super. He did not super. Building meter is better for Oro than Q, so that was the right play. Trying to lame him out a bit. Super 2 against Q. I have a feeling that might be... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Or a smash is Q either way. This is a very, very easy matchup. I've like fought really good Qs who I just smashed. Don't really like that setup against Q. Oh, he didn't even get there in time. You can't cross Q up in the corner, so you can't get corner unblockable. So if Q's cornered, he just like you just get a mix up on him, and that's it. Which is not nearly as good. Why are you doing that? Why don't you just duck? Just duck and then punish. Why don't you have to fucking do any bullshit like that? Or is Crouch low profiles all dash punches? Or not all, but like the straight ones, the good one. Wow, this is brave. Did not hit him at all. You get him? Yeah. That was, uh, that was smart, sadly. That's probably a punish. I don't like this. Why are you running super fucking two in the first place? It's not a punish, I don't think. Pretty sure the overhead one is safe. Failed on the walk-in. He wouldn't have had an unblockable anyway because he was too close to the corner. I really don't... It's too easy to corner Q, and Super 2 is too useless once you corner the opponent. I really don't like this pick Like the more I watch it. I always pick Super 3 in this matchup. I never even really thought about Super 2 in this matchup. But, like, I don't like it one bit. All right, he actually got an unblockable from that somehow. He can win off of this if he's good. That's the right. Um, a little bit weird movement, and he failed to cross up because of that, and then he failed to build meter because he failed to get the chicken. All right, that was nice. Yeah, get that stun. I can EX Fireball at this point. He's got a lot of bar, or like a super. I say Fireball cancel the super. Just do it. Just do it. That's fine. Now he's pretty much got it in the bag. Anytime he wants to win, he can be... Oh my god, don't choke this. Don't choke this. Just Fireball the super, thank god. I'll throw another Fireball. Yeah, 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 yeah! Exactly! Exactly! That is exactly what I would have done. Super Dear Oro is generally the best super he can pick. Don't get me wrong. But just certain matchups. Don't forget that Super 3 has a touch of death in the corner against Q. Kind of a big deal. It's also not that hard. And also, even if you fuck it up, you still like do a shit ton of damage to him. You still generally kill him. Yes, Alex really hates that uh, super jump. Alex hates Aura's pokes in general, and he also hates Aura's jump arc in general. This is like a hard matchup. It's not like super bad. Yes, yeah, good setup. He can get the unblockable off of this. What a weird... What the fuck was that? I've never seen anything like that. It worked. It definitely worked. Um, hit grab is blockable. He could have just started blocking. Um, yes, he could have done it. But I think it would have hit like around the last hit of the fireball. So he might have blocked. He might have parried all the hits of the fireball and then shifted to blocking and then managed to get out of that. Generally speaking, like even if that didn't happen, even if there was like an extra hit of fireball. Like, the, if you switch over to block on the hit grab, um, um, the opponent will only actually die if they are literally one chip from dying. Like, one hit of the four hit fireball. That's the exact best way out. Jump watch for parry. Oh my god, this Alex is playing it clean. He's played this much up a lot, I get that feeling. Ah, uh, jump fierce it should have been. Or jump strong, perhaps. Alex has no air normal that kind of goes up. Jump fierce is probably the tallest one. Most of them just kind of go down or out. Almost all of Alex's air normals go out. Which you think would make him really good in an air-to-air -air scenario, but really it just gives him a whole lot of redundancy. Oh my god. Sora's playing with fire. He should win here. 
Watch for the stomp. That was pretty good. Oh my god. Okay, there it is. That was good. Yeah, you've got to be ready for that. Or dashing under you. That was good defense. Oro, Oro could have jumped in immediately and gotten the cross of unblockable there, but he didn't know that Alex was going to do nothing and try and block. He thought that Alex was going to try and jump and parry, or he was going to try and, uh, like, something like that. Jump and dive. Something where his best option would be to watch for the anti-air. Alex can still, like, like mix it. Oh, nice. Love that setup. He can't get anything off of this. Never mind. He actually got quite a lot off of that because Alex tried to jump out. Alex should not have tried to jump. That was a car throw. That was like a fat misplay. Even if Alex stayed on the ground, the crossbow unblockable was going to do absolutely no damage. Or could not. He didn't have time to get on the other side and then like start a chicken combo. He barely had the time to jump over and get the last hit of the fireball to hit on the other side. <laughs> Jimmy. Sounds like you. Oro wins if he's in the air. But he can't stay in the air forever. Oro's air to air is kind of beat Makoto's, and Oro's air to grounds kind of beat Makoto. Yeah. Oh, what the hell? He had better things to do than that. No crossing Makoto up. Very nice. Yeah, tricky. Anti-air fireball, and then you see the jump dash under. Very difficult, very annoying. I do stuff like that. He threw the hard fireball, he knew. I only ever throw the light at the medium, to be honest. That was very smart to not come down with a normal, because it was a situation where Makoto could parry. Non-committal is the way to play. This aura is generally more committal than you should be. I'm pretty sure I'm better than this aura, but I'd need to see a whole lot more footage. Ooh, got the frame. That's it. I recognize Aura's animation for when he already got hit. I recognize the correct frame that he should be on that the super links. Stand Strong is a really good poke in this matchup because it's a good poke and then if Makoto dashes into it, it can turn into this like the close strong and juggler and then you can combo out of it on reaction. In general, it's very annoying for her. Peeper? Yeah. Stomp? Didn't stomp. Stomp uh, crosses up Makoto even if she quick stands. You always get the um, setup. See it again. Alright, that time he watched and waited and he got the cross from unblockable. Makoto has the slowest wake up in the game, fun fact. She's also the widest character in the game. She's one of the shortest, but I don't think she is the shortest. Very, he went for the very, he went for the very easy punish. Oro can get um, walk in, stand strong on a block dash punch, but it's very precise. It's very precise, but of course it's really rewarding. If you block a dash punch, you can always get close forward because close forward's activation range doesn't require you to walk in. So you can get close forward into command grab, which is what I almost, almost always do. Um, but if you block like a space dash punch, the only follow-up you have, the only punish you have is like stand around house. So he like saw that he was kind of far out and he didn't want to fuck around with the walk-in stand medium kick. So he just did stand around house. He like could have won sooner, but it was like a safe play. And from, judging from the range that he hit the stand around house at, I think it was the correct play. Nothing stops the stun meter from going down in this game. It's not like it stops whenever you, uh block that was that was that was like a borderline choke all right that actually worked out really well for him though he should have had the um the juggle to kill very easily there even with a two hit stand strong my combo would have been two hit stand strong juggle hard fireball walk in uh stand strong super jump cancel neutral jump run house Ooh. that was probably a he came down with a parry i think that was smart he's playing this really well I'm suddenly doubting that I'm better than the Sora.
Don't forget that Makoto is like a strong character. Don't forget about Makoto's inherent tools. Don't forget Makoto can do like like 90% of your stun on one command grab and like 50% of your health. <laughs> ah, the mirror. Vitoru Noah. I don't know what the fuck the ref, the name is there. Could be Little Noah. I guess. That's a punish. He could have gotten something better. That was anti-air parry into stand strong. I like that setup. You don't see it very often. Super cancel into... That's unsafe for... Ooh, very nice. Very nice. Azora's killing it. This is really good. Whew. Maybe some 13. If you have a video. Ugh. The three stone. He went for repeated lip parries. You can parry the stones low or high. Doesn't matter. Nice struggle. No quick stand. That's the correct way to do this. Actually, I think he didn't have one anyway. Depends on the setup. Very nice. Oh, he went for the nothing. Extremely questionable. This should still kill. This should actually kill. He did like the most baby combo I've ever seen. That might have fucked him over. Okay, I didn't. Repeated jump forward? I mean, granted, it doesn't matter that much what you juggle with after the initial couple hits, but that was weak. Oh. Ah, I love the backdash. Jump in, get them to block an attack, immediate backdash into poke. Safe and um, frequently. Oh, okay. He should. I think he should save the meter. He's burning it. He's gonna kill. This is a kill combo. He's doing like stupid combos. Uh, he dropped it because it was stupid combos. He had like an easy kill there. Scaling only goes up so high in this game, and once it goes up to a certain amount, like you just end up doing like. Like imagine a Street Fighter. F imagine a Street Fighter Five if like all scaling just capped at fifty percent. It's like that in this game. It's worse than fifty percent, but. Ooh, I like that. Using command grab to go through. That's kind of risky because you can just get whiff punished or, you know, regular punished. Because uh, he doesn't get hit by the mirror at all. Like, when he pokes through the mirror with the command grab, it literally doesn't even, like, he never takes damage. So it doesn't cancel his recovery. It's, like, better to get hit by the mirror. That's why I do uppercuts into the mirror. Because you get a giant hitbox and then you, like, bounce off harmlessly. Very difficult for Yerin to come out of. Remember this character, Yerin? Look at that crouch fierce. Even when it gets an anti air in this game, it juggles properly. That's why it doesn't Street Fighter V. I can't wait for them to add Oro into Street Fighter V and then for him to be broken and then for everyone to fucking, like, pick him. Me just sit there on my fucking Oro. Be like, hey. Oh. If Aura's ever added to Street Fighter V, I'm gonna be like Gutex. I'm gonna be like Gutex with Urian. That's like a perfectly placed mirror, to be honest. That was literally the exact pixel you want the mirror to be at. Yeah, anti-air jab. You don't see that 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 anti-air very often. Very low reward. But very consistent. If you don't want to get jumped in on in this game, you can almost always just do... Oh, nice. You can almost always just do OS parry into jab. One of the critical lack of lollies in um, Street Fighter. The only ones I can think of are like Makoto, Ibuki, and Sakura. I guess Elena. Elena's like the antithesis of the lolly, though. Oh, 
Elena's like the brain of a lolly and the body of an elf. No wonder she's perfect. I think his V-Trigger would almost definitely be stones. And his super... would probably be the grab? I don't know. None of his supers would really translate into... Probably his EX Super 1 would be the super. If they, they could give him Super 2, but they literally made, like, Dalsim Super or a Super 2. It's like the same exact thing. Oh. That's the setup. He got it. Oh, fucked it up just a little bit. You gotta be perfect for all that. It's very difficult. It's harder than it looks. It's because it's dash, dash, like, headbutt. And headbutt's a buffalo headbutt motion. It's charge down up plus punch. This game is very fun if you're good at it. It's got like a sweet spot. The poor balance makes it kind of a slog at the very highest level of play. Um, and if you're bad at fighting games, you can't really play with parries very well. So there's like a point where you're like kind of good to like really, really good, but not like quite like, you know, like turning tower level, where it's like a really cool fighting game. I'm not even playing. I play this game all the time if you want to. I mean, all the time is a bit strong. I do play this game somewhat regularly. Missed it. Both dropped it. <laughs> yeah. He didn't expect the special move. He tried to block like a poke stand. Oh, no, he didn't even parry. I mean, he didn't even block. He just actually got hit by that. It was a failed parry. Cut off guard. The actual, like, pressure to parry everything when you have low health is very, very stressful. Tosuka Sensei. This is, generally speaking, the second best Dudley. And possibly the best one. No, I wouldn't say that. He's quite good, though. He's, like, top four Dudleys. Put it like that. Whew. All those jabs. Tyrion likes anti-air jab. He might hit the mirror. Nope, it was a light super. It was a bit silly of me to assume he would use the hard one. The light one's generally better anyway. You generally get all the hits with the light one. The light one's also a lot more annoying to punish if it's blocked. The least super is like kind of safe. It's like annoyingly safe. It's only like minus seven or something like that. Who is this guy talking to? Everyone? You guys? Did you not get clued in the first time you asked a question and I responded to it? Ooh, short swim glow was really cool. Why SP? There are a few things that bring me as much joy as watching YSB. <laughs> no, we're just watching archives. This matchup, dude, why? Why always? Why always? Why is it always YSB versus a, a Dudley or a Chun? 100%. You instant air parry. Um, you've got to get past your pre-jump frames, but then you can parry. I think pretty much as soon as you get into the air, you can parry. It might be like a couple frames, but it's very nearly as soon as you leave the ground. It's quite difficult to do, though. Recently, there's been this big push, especially among Japanese players, um, that every time you jump, you should parry like your instant air frames. It's kind of weird. 
You never used to see that. Now you see it like every now and then. The thing is, you only see it when someone actually like gets parried on their way up. So it's like you never know how often people are doing it with their jumps. It might be every fucking time. It's kind of annoying though because you need to go from neutral to forward in order to do a parry. So you can't just do up forward to straight forward. Nice. Good confirm. Yugo can get pretty much any or air normal. Any air heavy and then coming out in super. Parries? Yeah. Those are really parries so they're really easy. SPD or the wall throw into backbreaker at higher damage. Um, I actually don't know. I know that the wall throw into clap into backbreaker is strong, stronger than SPD. I don't know about just, I don't know about the damage values of almost anything in this game, because there's no like training mode. There's a training mode, but I never ever use it. Ooh, he got the clap. Mm. That was nice, anti-air. This is... A, oh, he missed it. Those can be unblockable in Hugo. In fact, they generally are. I shouldn't say generally. Like, if you do the right setup, they're unblockable. Roshi Hikari is, generally speaking, the best Sayambu user in the world. Ooh, that same fear is doing work. Be careful. Don't get parried. That's bad, too. Really good confirm. Why speak a god? <gasps> the running bear! YSP is actually a god. It must be really easy to play Hugo if you can read minds. Is this the online version? No. These two play these two players are playing in an opposing cab in Japan. You can combo out of overheads and lows. Oh he's doing the full string! Normally you see repeated resets. Okay, we still got a reset. He was trying to trick. That was clever. Anyway, repeated resets are very hard to interrupt, and they do uh, a lot more damage. So generally speaking, repeated resets are better than finishing your combo. But technically speaking, like Yang can do continuous... Uh, he can do a, a single string of like constant say Embu. You generally don't see Yangs do the completed combo. This should trade. Yeah, it did trade. Wow! It was a super knockdown, so he was guaranteed to get that taunt. That was intelligent. Why is intelligent? Oh, no super confirm. I think he caught himself off guard there. With that clap. Hugo has very few confirms for super. Not very few, but like... It's basically clap or like two jabs. That's nice. Or like certain air attacks. Obviously every character has parries uh, as confirms. It's not that Hugo's confirm options are really limited. It's more that his combo options are really limited. It's more like his like most of his attacks are designed to be very standalone. Tommy Naga. I would say that Hugo, Hugo sort of, I don't know. Nice. Lots of damage. YSP makes some pretty nutty reads. I've never even been in Sonic Soul Strat, to be honest. <laughs> jump fierce into jump fierce. No confirm on the body splash. Wow, this is actually going to do a shit ton of damage. And it's enough. He already had prior stun. If he hit that jump right now, he would not have had to burn EX. In fact, I don't think he had to burn EX at all. Good to be safe, though. Makoto gets a glut of meter. It's not a super big deal to use a little bit. Alright. BMS Vysol comes here. He's not new. <laughs> I've seen him for like probably more than a year, I think. Uh, uh. Oh, he's going for the double. Oh, he dropped it. <laughs> Neat. You never see that combo. 
You can still get follow-ups off of two. I'm pretty sure that Makoto's Super 2 resets struggle potential once it connects. This is where YSV is most dangerous. That being said, a single dash punch will just kill him. The trick is to kind of force your opponent's hand. That's what YSV was trying to do. It would be catastrophic if Tominaga um, did a random dash punch uh, and as, as Hugo was jumping because Hugo would just kill him on the way down. So the idea is you jump around a little bit, and that way, every time you come down, you parry. Because the the idea the opponent has is, well, the only time they can't randomly be jumping out is if I hit them while they're landing. So you kind of time it so it's after they land, but before they can jump again. But you just parry in that time. This looks like it. All right, so where's that link? Let me see what this is, and then I will determine if I'll watch it instead.